welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to respond to some comments that I received on previous videos about an inability to draw but wanting to paint some of my tutorials. And I wanted to give you some options. If you can't draw, that does not mean you cannot paint. In fact, when I first started out painting, I had taken a watercolor class at my local community college. And the person who was teaching the class did everything by transfer. Everything that we painted in the class was done by transferring a drawing to paper. And it worked out beautifully because I had no drawing skills. And I'm going to show you where I came from. I've done this once before and showed my first journal, the first things I have ever drew or painted as an adult. And I want you to see just how elementary I was. Let me grab that sketchbook and I'll show you. Okay, this is a bit of an embarrassment for me. <laughs> because I was just so lousy. And I just want you to know, people don't wake up with talent and just become artists. I worked a long time. I worked very hard. I've only been painting for about eight years, a little under eight years, maybe seven. Uh, I forget if it was 2012 when I started. It could have been a few months after I went on disability. I went on disability at the end in December of 2011. So I probably took the class in either 2012 or 2013. But this stuff was done with mixed media. And I will show you exactly. I joined an online class on Facebook. And the artist posted prompts on YouTube every day for 30 days. And I got to know a lot of people. We started our own group page on Facebook, which was really nice. But anyway, this is how I started out. This was my level of talent. And there were prompts every day. And I had to do something with these prompts. So um, this was my level of drawing skill at the time. It was not good at all. Let me see if I can find something here. Here's, here's something I did with spray, sprays and some lines. <laughs> um, that, I was so proud of this that I drew at the end, but I knew nothing about drawing and I was using Jane Davenport's um, rules for drawing faces that were very whimsical and they all looked the same. I mean, this is it, you guys. This is how I was drawing and painting in those days. Um, this one I worked really hard on. It was a shoe. And I was using Zentangle. Um, but my perspectives weren't always very good. This was from my back deck. That was my view from my deck. Uh, my feet. So... That's it, you guys. So anyway, you get an idea of how I could draw then, and I was not very talented at all. Swimming. I was doing my swimming. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you get the idea. I had no talent. Uh, people will tell me how talented I am. You are so talented. Whatever you do, you, can, you do it so well and blah, blah, blah. No, whatever I do, I put my mind to practicing, and I practice daily. So, in order to draw, you're going to have to practice drawing. And I suggest just drawing some object that's in front of you every day. Just spend 15 minutes. That's all you have to do. But, in the meantime, if you want to paint my tutorials, there are ways to transfer drawings. And that's what this video is about. One way is by using something like this, which is called the Etcher Mirror. And there is another one on the market now that is much cheaper I can't remember the name of it. If somebody else knows the name of it, please comment down below so other people can uh, get it if that's what they want. And I will pin that to the top of the comments. But this I reviewed, the Etcher Mirror, quite a while ago. And I honestly don't use this. But if I wanted to transfer a drawing, I do it through my iPad. And I'm going to show you exactly how 
I do all of that. And don't laugh at me for my pictures. Yeah, they were crappy. They were pretty crappy. But I have come a long way. So <laughs> just don't laugh at me. I just wanted to name off a few ways that you can do this. If you have a computer and a printer, or if you want to take a an image to your local library and scan something into a larger format, like maybe a 12 by 16 or 16 by 20. If you want to do something large, you can scan the images and have them made bigger or go to a Kinko's or whatever's out there now. I don't even know. But I suggest you making a drawing of it first, transferring it, not just taking a photo and having that blown up because that'll cost you a lot. If you just do a pencil drawing, around uh, something, then have it transferred, it would go a lot easier. Now how I do that, well there are several ways. You can take a print off of your com off of your printer and then just put a piece of graphite paper underneath your print. I'm sorry, I moved the camera. Just put the graphite paper underneath your print and then go around the print with a pencil and you will pick it up on your graphite paper. The other option is to do what I do if I need to do it. I don't do it very much anymore. I did it for the sake of this video, but um, I will do it from time to time if I'm having a lot of trouble struggling. Uh, I was trying to do it with this painting that I started. This is unfinished, but I wanted to do something for my nephew, a great nephew, and I was having trouble with the tails, the tail from the back fish coming forward and then the foreshortening of this tail on this fish, it was confusing me, so I tried to transfer it, and it wasn't working out well, and I ended up having to draw it. But now I'm not real happy with the way the painting's going, so I'm probably going to redo that anyway. The thing that I did transfer was this seagull, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. Let me just grab it here. This was the seagull that I did. Um, and after I drew the seagull out, what I did was I just took the graphite pencil, a 9D, and scratched it on the back, filled it in, and then transferred my drawing by turning it over and drawing over my drawing again on the front. It takes extra steps, which is part of the reason I don't do it very often. Um, the other option you have for drawing, <clears throat> which is a <clears throat> highly recommended way of doing things, is by doing it in the graph sequence. And I sometimes do it, it depends, uh, like that chicken painting I did that you saw on Instagram. Let me grab that real quick. This one that I did was difficult. The actual way that the chicken's head was facing and everything was very difficult. So I needed to use a little bit more uh, help with, with the graph lines, the square graph. So anyway, let me show you how you do that and I'll show you how I also transfer the drawings. Okay, so here is one that I thought, well, I did and I thought I was recording. So anyway, what I did was um, I used the Etcher app and if you don't have an Etcher or something similar, you can just use a photo right on your computer or your iPad or whatever. And this one I did on my Etcher app and then put it into my photos. But all you have to do is enlarge it. Um, that, let me turn the light off here. Enlarge it, turn your light way up so you can see it, and then put your vellum or tracing paper or whatever over it, which is what I did. This doesn't fit. Um, on here. I'll show you the picture that I had transferred from my Etcher app. Uh, let me just get out of this for a minute. There we go. My Etcher app had... I had turned it into a sketch like this and I enlarged it to the size that I wanted it to be and then I downloaded it. And when I downloaded it, then I went ahead and transferred the drawing by using a pen and just sketching over it. I put a tape down so that it sits still, and it isn't perfect. I mean, it got off a little bit, like if I line up the head, then my feathers can be off a bit. Now, what you do after you get your picture done like that, then um, you take your picture, and 
on the back, you take a pencil, and I used a 9B pencil, and you just go over it like this, and put pencil all over the back, like that. Or you can use something called graphite paper, which I tend not to like to use, and I'll tell you why. This is graphite paper, and you can buy packages of it. You can use a single piece, though, forever. I think I've had this for six years. And one thing I transferred, I can tell, was a lighthouse that I did for a commission. I wanted it to be perfect. But you can put this down and then lay your drawing on top of it and then just trace over it and it comes out on your watercolor paper. The problem with the graphite paper is it, is, it comes out very, very dark and it's very difficult to erase. So if you use a pencil like this, you can keep your lines very light. So that's all you do. And then when you're ready to, to paint or to start, then you take your watercolor paper. I just have some arches here. This is a 12 by 16 sheet that I'm using because I'm making a big seagull. And I'm going to go ahead and tape it down where I want it. Um, I want to make sure I've got it high enough from the edge so that it does not interfere with it being matted later. And then I'm going to make sure it's straight because I, I was a little cockeyed when I put the paper down. Then I'm just going to put some tape down around it to hold it still. Just like that. And then you go back over it with another pencil. Um, I usually use a, like one of my HB pencils or something hard like that. And then all you do is you go over your lines like this and you trace it. Now I know many of you have said, oh, I'd like to do that rabbit or I'd like to do that landscape or whatever. Do you have a copy? And I don't make copies. Normally I just draw it, but, um, if you want to do it this way, you can. So I'm going to go around the outside and I'll show you exactly what happens. You don't want to press so hard that you end up putting a divot in your paper because once it's there, you cannot get it out. So I don't recommend you using a ballpoint pen or even a um, micro, micro, whatever these are, micron pens, because they can destroy the paper. And if you have a slightly dull pencil, you can. I try to use the side of the pencil a little bit more rather than right on the point. And I don't care if it's not exact. If I go in and out of the lines, not a big deal. Unless you're doing something like a building, a feather is not gonna matter. So when you get it done, which I didn't, but when you get it done, you just peel it up and you can see, hopefully you can see my yeah, you can see my sketch. So that's what I have down so far. So this is my etcher, <clears throat> and I, I apologize for noise. It is raining pretty heavy here today, and the rain on my tin roof is very loud, which I love, but not very conducive for videos. Uh, the etcher mirror looks like this. It comes with these pieces. This is just a piece of plastic, um, and then I have these three little things here that I use and these two things, and this puts the frame together. So all you do is you take your pieces and put them on the above and the lower portions of this to snap them into place. Once that is done, then you do the second one the same way. Once they're all in, got to make sure that these pieces are even and then you're going to take your piece of plastic and you're going to put it on the bottom portion of this just like this very simple then you're going to take your your phone or your iPad and you're going to place it in here and turn your brightness all the way up turn your lights off and then you're going to take your piece of paper and you'll see the image through the plastic and you can draw it. You can make it as big or as little as you want and then just move the picture over and then realign it and keep doing it that way. 
It's a little bit cumbersome and I don't care for it so much. But then there's an app and the app that comes with it, I think you have to purchase the etcher in order to get the app. So I'll show you, if you do have the app, I'll show you exactly how I do this through the app, which I like so much better. Um, I would go ahead and look up a photo. We'll just say seagulls. Oops, gulls, seagulls. My keyboard wasn't awake yet. Okay, and then I go to my images and I will look something up. So let's say you want to do this crazy face here. What I do is I just hold it on my iPad, put add to photos. Then I would go down to my Etcher app and pull up my Etcher app. Now the Etcher app looks like this. I gotta turn my light off so you can see this better. There we go. The Etcher app looks like this. And there's these three things across the bottom. After you've set up your app, you just go ahead, you can either snap a photo or you can go into your photo, and then I would grab the photo and it would load. Here's the photo that I just transferred from Google. And I would go ahead and you can either trace around the picture this way or you can choose different options. You can choose this type of an option, this type of a sketching option, or this one, which is my favorite, I use this. And then I turn the brightness all the way up. And then I turn the line up as well. And you can choose different levels of line thickness. You can go all the way up. It gets really huge. I usually like to keep it around here. Then what you would do, you can either download it by hitting this little button here. And everything comes up in Chinese. And then I've tried both and I couldn't figure out which was which. This is the one that you would use, the one on the left. And automatically it downloads to my photos. So if I go into my photos now, my recents, here's the photo that I just transferred. But another way to do this is to make it as large or as small as you want. Now I want to turn it horizontally, so I'm going to do it like this. Push this button here, turn it make it a little bit bigger because I want to fill up my paper and then I'm going to hit this lock button down here. That locks my image so no matter what I do I won't move it around. Then if you want to make it even larger, let's say you want it to be larger than it is so you're going to make it this large. Um, what you do is then you move this over to where you want it, hit lock draw around this then you'll hit unlock move it over with one finger if you do two you change your size and you don't want to do that so you do one finger move it over hit lock and then continue drawing and so on that's how you would do it locking the image prevents it from moving around when you're trying to trace it when you do it in your photos It'll close your photo down, your photo will open again, whatever. So this is how I would transfer a photo. Also, if you want it to look like the picture that you are looking at on, um, on Google and you're using your at your mirror, what you would want to do is flip it to mirror image. And then when you put it on your mirror, it will come out the reverse and then you can trace it down on your paper. Now I have, like I said, I have a whole video on this. I can show, I can link it if you're interested in it. Um, but this is a nice little gadget to have. I like the app itself more than I like the actual gadget that comes with it. Uh, and I don't think you can get this app unless you purchase it because you need a code in order to download the app, I believe. Let me see. Let me go in here real quick to the app store. I don't know if I'll be able to tell because I already have it downloaded, but see if it says anything on there. At your mirror. Well, you could try it and see. 
only got 3.7 out of 5 stars. The app itself, I think, is wonderful once you know how to use it well. But um, the, here they're showing how to transfer the drawing from your iPad, and then it comes down on the paper, and the person's drawing it on the paper or making it larger and then moving it over because you're using a phone or whatever. Um, very simple to do. But anyway, you could try going to Etcher, E-T-C-H-R, Mirror, and see if you can download that app. Now, once you've gotten that done, let's say I've gone ahead and I've transferred the drawing. I showed you the thing here. Then I would go ahead, grab my watercolor paper, and have it underneath here. Um, I'll just take this dirty piece of paper over here. Have that underneath here. And then I would go ahead with a pencil. Not a pen. You don't want to use a ballpoint or anything too sharp because you don't want to get indentations in your paper. But then I would go around like this. Not too heavy, but just enough to get my lines. And I'm just going to make this really rough so that you can see it. But... Um, then it would show up on the paper just like this because I've put that 9B pencil on the back. Now, I had mentioned using graphite paper. The problem with graphite paper, let me show you here, is that it can be very difficult to erase. I'm just going to put this down and put some lines on the paper. It comes out much darker. See how much darker it came out? And I didn't press any harder. But then when you go ahead to re erase those lines because they're too dark and you don't want them showing up as much on your paper, then when you erase them, if I could find an eraser, here's one. Um, it's a lot easier to erase. Let me turn this down now. It's a lot easier to erase these lines and lighten them up than it is to erase these lines. See? I can get them lighter, but I can't make them disappear like I could up here with this one. So that's why I don't care so much for graphite paper. If I use graphite paper, I try to be super, super light, and then I have to constantly check and think, oh, did I press hard enough? Did I press too hard? It drives me crazy. So the other thing is, is that when you're transferring a drawing like this, as you start to learn to draw, you're going to want to do this less and less because... It takes up so much extra time, and you could have drawn it and been done. So now, the next thing you could do is use what I said was the graph thing, where, you're, where you've got the lines on your photo. Now, most photo apps will give you a graph option. Um, let me see if I can do it on my iPad. I'm pretty sure if I can do it on my phone, I could probably do it on my iPad. And then what you would do is, let's see here, I'm going to go to my photos, go to this bird again, and I'm going to edit it and see if I can put graph lines on. I'm not sure if I can. Let's see here. I don't know this app as well. Add grid on an image in the app store. Here you go. There's an app for it. You can get grid hashtag. It's just called grid and then you can go and add your image right to the to the grid and then print it out or just keep it on your iPad and then when when you put your you put your graph down on your photo and trans you don't transfer it you actually draw it so what i would do with this let's say you wanted to use this one i would Start by saying, okay, this square has this in it, and then draw it, and then this square has this much in it, and then I draw that, and so on and so forth. And it's a nice way to learn how to draw um, onto your paper. Basically, what you're doing is looking at the image with the squares, and then you're just taking whatever is in that square and drawing that on your paper. This is a bad example. But... Here they show that you can add extra grid lines to make them even smaller if you're having difficulty drawing something, which is really nice. The only thing is, is then you've got to put grids down on your paper. And doing that 
can leave grid lines on your paper. So this is a good way to practice drawing, but it is faster to just do a transfer if you're gonna go to that much trouble. So a lot of people will just transfer drawings. Uh, so that is the other way that you can do this. It's very simple to do. I hope that I explained it well enough for you. Um, here, I'll show you what I did when I got my seagull down. I did this that seagull drawing that I just showed you and put it on the paper. And then I went ahead and started painting. I'm not finished with it yet. But this is the seagull that I was working on. And all I did was transfer it. Normally I would just draw something like this on and I wouldn't put all these feathers in because as it is now I'm changing them up anyway and adding more and deleting some and moving them around a little bit and making it my own. But that's how you do it. So uh, I hope this helped you guys. If you want to follow along like on my bunny painting or whatever, just go online, find a bunny, transfer it onto a piece of paper, and then follow the rules I gave you. It doesn't have to be the exact same bunny. I tried to find the photo. I went back. I put punched in rabbit, hair, bunny, everything, and I could not find the photo anywhere to save my life. So I couldn't really share it with the person who asked, or I would have put a link down. So anyway, I hope this helps you. Go ahead and try it, and you'll be surprised at how well you're able to transfer the drawing, and get painting. So just go ahead and try transferring your drawings if you're struggling with drawing onto your watercolor paper. A transfer is not cheating. Some professional artists, that's all they do is transfer their drawings over, and others don't. So for me, uh, I'll tend to transfer things like buildings because I can get off on my perspective. If I have a building that somebody has given me, I'll transfer a drawing, or I'll do the grid method so that I can get the drawing down on paper correctly. Um, but otherwise, with like landscapes and that kind of thing, I, I normally don't do that at all. Or urban sketching, those kinds of things, it's just a way to practice your drawing skills. So keep at it. Go ahead and transfer drawings if that's what you need to do. Don't be ashamed of it. Some artists are going to tell you that it's cheating and this and that. There are no rules. The only time that becomes a problem is if you're in some kind of juried art show and everybody has to be on a level playing field. Then they'll say you, you can't transfer a photo. You have to draw it. Or the plein air competitions. You're drawing from life anyway. So those are the kind of times that there would be rules. Other than that, there are no rules. Somebody just went off on me the other day about the way I was holding my brush. Apparently, I had a brush, it was from a, an old video, and I, when I write, I tend to wrap my thumb over my finger like this. That's how I hold a pen. It's just my lefty way of doing things, and I've always written like that. So apparently in this one video, I must have done this and was doing fine detail work. And she went off on me and told me I was holding my pen, my um, brush wrong and that I shouldn't overlap my thumb over my finger and this and that. I thought, okay, lady, I'm 58 years old. I've been writing and painting and drawing the same way my entire life. And that's what works for me. There are no rules that say you cannot put your thumb over your finger. You know, I mean, we all write differently. Some people hold a brush like this. Some people hold it like this. Some people hold it like this. You know, there. some people hold it like this. I've seen people write like this, too. There's so many different ways to write. So I thought, oh, my God, woman, you are crazy. I just finally blocked her from putting comments down because she kept going off on me, and I thought, this is nuts. Um, but don't worry about rules. Do what works for you. If it gives you a painting that you're happy with, that is what you need to be doing. If it's not working for you, then change it up until you get it right. And practice, practice, practice. That's all there is to it. So in the meantime, remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon. And most of all, be kind to each other. God bless you all. Take care.